a man unzips his pants and starts peeing. To his surprise, he finds that the ejaculating liquid forms an arc, the man is a bit bewildered. He starts adjusting the angle, he turned to the left first, then he turned to the right, wow, the liquid always accurately lands in the hole. The man chuckled, what's going on? The man begins various attempts and adjusts his positions. The first time, he turned 90 degrees sideways. He is at a distance of 4 feet, the liquid hits right on the target. Even while swirling in the air, the second time, the man faces straight at the target. It can still go in. The man starts shifting drastically to his right. The trajectory of the liquid forms a big curve. Despite the twists of the trajectory, it still hits the target. The third time, the man thought. Now let me try spinning. He spins 360 degrees while staying at the same spot. Though the liquid goes around his body, it still manages to end up on target. Let me try jumping. Another one. I'm awesome. The fourth time. What about hitting at a zero degree angle from baseline? The man looks at the view outside through the window. The liquid goes into the hole as if landing a three-point shot. The man raises his doubts. I just can't believe this. The fifth time. He imitates a puppy urinating. And still hits the target. The sixth time. He took a half-time shot with a high arc. It hits again. The waiter was afraid of getting urine on himself. So he goes underneath the trajectory of the liquid. The man asks the waiter. Anyone else ever do this? Yes, sir. It seems that others have also showcased such a skill. The man gets tired of urinating and goes back to his room to rest. He opens the refrigerator. There's cola along with other drinks. The man swipes to the left. There are all kinds of snacks. He swipes again. There are hamburgers, fries, and drinks. It is truly convenient. Arson comes to the balcony. There is a green forest by the river. What a pretty view. Arson turns the nearby switch. Immediately. The outside transforms into a scene of heavy snowfall. Cool. It is very comforting to look at the great scenery. Arson feels hungry and goes to the cafeteria. There is a variety of delicious food. Mother of God, yes. Yes! Arson starts grabbing the goodies. A piece of bread with filling. Canadian bacon. Chocolate chip pancakes. French toast. The food turns into a small pile of mountain in Arson's plate. At this moment, three customers call for the waiter at the same time. What an impressive waiter. He splits himself into three. An announcement comes from the speaker at this time. It's 10 o'clock. Dining time is over. Suddenly, all the food disappeared. Arson is getting frustrated. I haven't eaten yet. Come on. A man rushes in at this moment. Clearly, he is also late. He starts shouting. Damn it. I was only one minute late. Do I have to starve now? The man walks up to the food cabinet. He bangs the cabinet door. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Surprisingly. A piece of bread appears out of thin air next to him. The man grabs it and starts eating. So this is the way to cheat the system. Arson decides to also give it a try. One, two, three, four, five. Sure enough, a bread appeared in front of him as well. Now he does not have to starve anymore. Arson walks outside. He notices that every leaf was imprinted with branded advertisements. Can you discover it? The shimmering lake surface is actually a dynamic image. Arson approaches a man to ask, why is there nobody around? The man next to him tells him. Don't think there is no one here. The man opens a map. We are at the 10,500th floor. We can only see the neighboring five floors. There are at least one million people hanging out over that lake. Look at that guy diving. He is lagging in the air right not because of overcrowding. Arson now realizes that. Seeing things require data usage here. He has unlimited data. There is also a slum here. In the 2G zone, they can only live in the basement and have only 2 gigabytes of data per month. They cannot afford the pretty views. Outside of their window, all they see is a blue screen. Kids don't have toys. They can only roll sticks on the ground out of boredom. The free cafeteria is where the rich people residence tests new dishes out. They can only read the first five pages of books. In order to read the rest, they have to pay extra. A young boy uses all of his data by reading a book of Harry Potter. He is frozen until next month. Some people can't even afford to buy clothes. They have to go around naked. People here can't do anything unnecessary. Even thinking requires spending data. What's the deal with this place? That is reverse Newtonian and requires data usage. In the year 2033 in the future, the technology of humans has reached new heights. Arson rides in a self-driving car. He insists on switching to manual mode and starts racing. As a result, he gets pulled over by the police. Arson tries to get himself out of trouble by blaming that the car had a malfunction. When he switches back to self-driving mode, he ends up in a car accident, rear-ending a large vehicle. Arson's body is severely injured. His life is in danger. The doctor gives Arson a choice. Option one is to undergo surgery for rescue. Option two is to transfer his consciousness and the brain into a virtual world. If the surgery failed, Arson will be done for. Arson's girlfriend, 
Ally, wants Arsene to pick option 2, since Ally's father's company, runs this virtual world, the two of them can still see each other, Arsene has no choice but to agree, the doctor straps Arsene into a chair, as a laser beam descends, Arsene's head disappears, his body falls onto an ice bed, his consciousness is transmitted into the virtual world, the voice of his personal secretary rings in his ears, hello, Arsene, when he opens his eyes, what he sees, is a Victorian sty suite, the secretary informs him, that Ally has chosen, an unlimited data package for him, so he can enjoy himself to the fullest here, in the future world, when people pass away, their consciousness can be uploaded to the virtual world, Arson looks at his healthy limbs, but he still can't accept the fact, that he's already dead, he hides to cry in bed, the secretary operates a control panel, and gently swipes, Arson immediately enters the sleep mode, then, she taps a few keys on the keyboard, and the blanket automatically covers Arson. Arson wakes up and wanders around. He encounters a woman dressed in black and white inside an elevator. The woman explains. My family uploaded a black and white picture of me from 1961, so I appear much younger. I am in room 10300. You can visit me in the evening. Arson thinks to himself, I'm definitely not going. He decides to explore outside instead. While being outdoors, Arson encounters a young boy. The boy is sneaking around behind some bushes. The boy motions for Arson to stay quiet. He asks Arson, is anyone around? Arson looks around and assures him that there's no one and it's safe. However, as soon as the boy stands up, a gardener spots him. He climbs down a ladder. Then he starts running towards the boy. The boy complains to Arson. You are terrible at spotting. The boy also charges at the gardener. The two of them start a duel. One uses the rising dragon fist while the other employs the King of Fists move, creating a fervent battle. Arson looks utterly confused, and asks the secretary, what is going on? The secretary explains that, the boy was bored. So he set all the NPCs, to the Street Fighter game mode. Arson sighs in amazement. Everything here is so incredible. Arson goes to the supermarket. A machine scans him. It immediately indicates that, your body lacks iron. You should consume spinach, just like Popeye. At checkout, a robot arm automatically scans items. In order to adapt to life here, Arson gets himself a dog. Unexpectedly, the dog starts talking. In the evening, Arson is going to attend his own funeral. His girlfriend carefully chose for him, an Italian pure green short suit. Arson is relieved that there's no green hat involved. Arson swipes across the screen, and has face-to-face -face video call, with people from the real world. In front of the crowd, the girlfriend delivers a speech, boasting about how impressive the virtual world her family manages is. She completely forgets that this is Arson's funeral. Arson gets angry at his girlfriend. My funeral is an absolute disaster. Yet the girlfriend lists a bill. I spent so much money on you in the virtual world. And you dare to say it was terrible. As she speaks, she swipes across the screen, threatening to delete Arson. Arson has to quickly apologize. After all, if the girlfriend deletes the data, Arson's consciousness will vanish. He won't ever be able to live anymore. The two of them part ways on bad terms. Arson returns to the hotel, a nearby AI robot, keeps promoting gum to him, but its program is consistently malfunctioning. This irritates Arson. He initiates a conversation with a neighbor. Nice boots. I just moved in. Living next door to you, the neighbor asks what he does for a living. Arson responds. I am a game designer. I am working on an application. However, he can't recall the name of the app. Is there a problem with my memory? Arson seeks out the secretary. In an attempt to recover his lost memories, the secretary brings out a computer. To help restore Arson's memory data, she discovers that before his passing, Arson and his friend worked on a projected called Transcend. However, just a few days later, Arson had an accident and die. There seems to be something fishy. The virtual world undergoes a system update. Everyone is forced into sleep mode. The secretary wakes up Arson, telling him that as long as he remains conscious during the update, he will cover all his memories. By exploiting a bug, the secretary operates the computer. Suddenly, an option pops up. If choosing to reset, Arson will forget everything that happened in the virtual world. The thought of Arson losing his memories of her makes the secretary hesitant. She informs Arson about the content of the option. Arson responds, if I would forget about you, then I'm not willing to recover my memories. This guy even tries to flirt. At a time like this, the secretary chooses to reset the memories. The next day, the memory reset Arson realizes that when he was alive, he was not only profit driven, but also betrayed his friends. Moreover, his relationship with his girlfriend was solely to get closer to her father. In order to do so, 
He even secretly sold his own project to her father. His project partner cut ties with him out of frustration and anger. Arson who regained his memories, can't accept his true self, so he willingly moves into the 2G zone. A thoughtful neighbor advises him, to do nothing here, and simply stay in his room. The secretary advises Arson, you can't change your past actions, but in this virtual world, you have a chance for a fresh start. What a top secretary. Arson is inspired, and decides to begin a new life here. The film concludes. This film is called, Upload. Question for today. Are you willing to upload your consciousness, to a virtual world? If so, please comment 111. If not, please comment 222. In the future, there is an option of uploading consciousness, including memories, into servers, and living in a virtual world. Maybe this is one of the ways to achieve immortality for human. This is a great film. We recommend you watch the original film in full. Please remember to like and subscribe. We will see you next time. Bye.